beautiful people, welcome back. I hope you all are having a beautiful day today. And the first thing I wanna say, just, just in case, you know, the things look crazy per usual here, like with lighting and whatnot, I am actually filming this video very, very late. Like it is pitch black outside. I have no natural light. I pulled the blinds. And I feel like sometimes when I film in this lighting, it makes me look um, a little bit intense, especially in the blushal region. Um, so, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. If I look a little bit, a little bit more intense than usual, cause let's be honest, I love blush. Uh, but if it's a little more intense than usual, that is why girls just out here living her best filming life. Um, just, you know, the nighttime version. So just want to point that out. Getting into today's video, you guys, I am so freaking excited. I put so much thought and time and, and curation into my thoughts and opinions here because for today, we are going to be going through and talking about ranking and just overall giving you like a foundation roundup on 10 of the most recent foundations I have been testing. Get a couple of these situations, maybe with one or two of these. Um, you guys have seen me either use them more than once or, you know, talk about them, give you a little bit of an update, but I don't think think I have done like any real conclusive updates on these foundations as a whole in quite some time. And this is a question that I asked you guys in Friday's video, I think it was, which I'll link up there. And that was actually my uh, favorites for the month, like my, my month end favorites for makeup. And oh my God, if you didn't see that video, there is so much makeup in there. Uh, there was just a ton of stuff that I was loving this past month. So be sure to check that out. And for those of you that might be new here, maybe you've never seen me. Hello. Hi, my name is Paige. Welcome to Seeking Alexandria. Um, I like to stop, just introduce myself, give you a brief rundown of the channel when I upload. Again, just in case you've never been here, what if you don't know me? What if you're not familiar with all of this, okay? It's very important that you know kind of what's going on. Oh my God, <laughs> I don't think you guys heard that. I just turned my head and it <clears throat> like cracked like... <clears throat> I'm shocked I'm still alive right now. That was so loud. Okay, anyways, hello, my name is Paige. Welcome to the channel. I do upload three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up right around 7, 7.30ish a.m. That's a.m. right and early in the morning, my time here in good old Northern Michigan. So if you like early morning uploads, um, I am the place to be. Again, Monday, I, I am the place to be. This, this is the place to be. Okay, let's not get it twisted, not me. Okay, this is the place to be. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, again, bright and early uploads. And then also, if you haven't heard me screaming it from like, I don't know, the corners of the internet, I am still trying to hit 10,000 followers over on Instagram. So if you haven't done so yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would go down in the description box, follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm really working on, I, I put out a ton of content over there, uh, but just to give you a brief run through again, if you're not you know familiar with it, if you've never been there, I do a lot of um, hanging out in my Insta stories, like the 24 hour Insta stories. That's where I like to do unboxings, PR unboxings. I talk to you guys in my office, we take walks together. And if there's any updates, you know, like, like let's just say I fall down a set of bleachers and I mess up my ankle, you know, little, little things like that. Um, that is where I update you on all of that. I give you the stories, all the fun stuff. And also in the feed of Instagram, I've been putting out so, so much content um, as far as, you know, makeup, makeup inspo photos, uh, plus size fashion. I've been really into that photography, having a little bit of fun. And also on the video side, I've been putting up way more content. I have IGTV videos, makeup application, makeup reviews. I have little mini makeup reels, which are just like fun ones to music. And then even just recently, I put up an IGTV of me going through and unboxing my Bath & Body Works order, which I gotta say, okay, that was so much fun. I love doing it. And again, just overall for me, Instagram is the place. If you're looking for me, you know, outside of YouTube, you want more of um, hanging out with me, you want more personality, you want to see kind of what, what it's like behind the scenes of the channel. That is definitely the place to be. Getting out of introductions, okay, I think it's time. I think it is time that we, you know, just kind of roll it back a second and start getting into uh, the actual foundations because I have 10 of them, 10 of them sitting in front of me. And the first thing I want to say, now this is something that came from one of you guys down in the comments. She requested that when I was doing this video that I go through and try to do them in some sort of a ranking order. Um, just because that way she said, you know, it's easier for me to understand kind of what you like the most, what you like the least and that sort of thing. And so for the purposes of today's video, I did try to arrange them um, just in like a broad sense of this is what I like the least all the way to the most, you know, type situation. Um, excuse me so much. Don't, don't bother me anymore. So for the purposes of today's video, I did try to give them like that rough arrangement where, um, you know, they, they do kind of run from my least to my favorite. At the same time, you know, while I did keep that in mind, you will see that there are several instances where I, I might really love the foundation. I think it's beautiful. I think it's, you know, this, that, the other, but because my skin type is combo leaning oily, they just necessarily didn't work for me or for my pores or, you know, that sort of stuff. So just kind of keep that in mind as I go through the foundations that, you know, it, even if it's lower on my list and it doesn't work for me, if you are sitting here watching this and you have normal combo dry or just straight up dry skin, you might really, really enjoy the ones that are lower on my list. So again, just putting it out there, just, you know, giving you guys all the information. Now, just to get things kicked off, have it have them fun, lighthearted. We're going to start with obviously number 10, my least favorite foundation I have tried. And oh my God, did I hate this foundation? Okay. It is absolutely awful. This is the J Cat Skin Insurance Foundation. And <coughs> I am so sorry, but this foundation, 
it literally <laughs> I tried this three times okay and every single time it was absolute awful okay so I'm just gonna give you kind of a rundown now th this is not one of those foundations by the way I'm just gonna put it all out there this is not one of those foundations that oh I put it on and like I think it could work good on this skin but like not necessarily for me no wrong man this is the foundation that I think needs to go straight in the garbage it won't look good on on, on anybody I mean if, if you're asking me um, I think that this foundation is too thick it's way too chunky it doesn't settle into the skin it has a horrible texture to it and it's sticky, okay? And when I say sticky, I mean like I'm pumping it into my face. Like I got this sponge and I'm like, book, 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 and every single time it feels like flypaper, okay? And I can't get down like that. So to me, this is number 10. It is the worst. It's real quick, <laughs> succinct out the way because my opinion on this foundation did not change, not one bit. Um, and then also just as a side note too, it says that this is supposed to be for max coverage. And I addressed this in the video, which by the way, I will link all of these down below as well as their corresponding videos. Like I'll try to layer them in there so you can watch the application application and all of that. But I mentioned this in the video with this foundation. It says max coverage and y'all, there ain't nothing max about this coverage. It is the, uh, it's just not max. There's no, there is, this to me is like a sticky, thicky, off <laughs> I'm sorry, what? This is a sticky, thicky, awful ass medium coverage foundation and I do not like it, no thank you. Garbage, don't need it next. All right, so this next foundation, we're, we're, obviously it earned its spot at number nine here because I don't necessarily care for it on my skin. But the thing with me about this one, this is the Bite Changemaker Foundation. And this foundation, which again, I did a full video, you guys saw it applied. And even after application, after I did my check-in, I was really impressed in that video with how well it wore and just how nice and like, smooth it looked over my face. You might be asking yourself, Paige, how, how could your opinion of this so drastically have changed from it looking so beautiful one moment to, oh my god, it's sitting at number nine the next? And the thing about this foundation, like the, the thing that I keep going back to it with is the fact that I feel like on my skin, for some reason, this is so inconsistent. And I can't figure out with this foundation if it's a consistency issue, a primer issue, or like what it is, because I tried this foundation. I've tried it multiple times now. I've mixed it a bunch and I've just overall been really playing with the texture and for me I, I noticed the biggest difference with this one as I played around with primers and so I think it has something to do with the consistency and how it settles into my pores like that's what makes it very very um different from like one application to the next but if I had to sum it up give you the highlights and the lowlights which is what I'm gonna do to you know try to do for all of these um I would say the highlight for this foundation um I think it would work really well if you are someone that you don't set your face so maybe if you have drier skin or you just don't like to set it but you love more of like a satin leaning dewy appearance on your skin. This is definitely that foundation. It looks really, really beautiful when it's not set. And I think it would be one that could work for you if you are more on the dry spectrum. But I also think, you know, just kind of looking at my other, you know, items here, other stuff I have in the lineup, I think there are other foundations that I like better than this one, even if you are like on that dry, normal, you know, type spectrum. All right, now going into number eight, okay, th this one actually, this caused me a little bit of a kerfuffle, um, so much so that while I was getting my lineup situated, I was getting ready today, I actually decided to wear this foundation because I was just, I, I was in such a place of uncertainty with it and I wanted to make sure that I placed it correctly. And so uh, for, for today, what I am wearing as well as what is sitting at number eight, this is the Rare Beauty, I believe this is their weightless foundation, and I am wearing this in the shade 170W. Now, um, with this foundation, I am going to give you what I feel after wearing it now several times, I'm going to give you my perception of it and kind of my overall good, bad, and indifferent. So I think with this foundation, foundation, I think it has for sure a couple of positives. Number one, it is very, very, very lightweight, very thin in consistency. And the way that it feels on your skin, like you, you can't tell that you're wearing it. So it has a very um, lifelike feeling, but at the same time, it does deliver you a really nice medium buildable coverage. So you can play around with it and still get that skin like appearance, which I really, really appreciate, especially for like a lighter makeup day, um, which again, those are all positives. However, however, on my skin, something that I noticed with this one that kept causing me issue after issue and even today on my nose obviously you guys can't see it but something that I noticed with this right from the start was that because that consistency is so thin and, and all of the stuff essentially that makes it really beautiful and really feeling nice on the skin are the same reasons that on my nose and like my super porous areas it does tend to kind of settle into them fall into them and really just emphasize my pores like they, they literally stick out like little pinpricks that that's how egregious it is so with this foundation 
um, the, the way that I kind of started to avoid that was to go in and use it like I did today only on the perimeters and then through the t-zone I actually used a concealer which for today I used the same one I talked about it in my month end favorites I used my benefit boing cakeless concealer and I used that literally all through here the under eyes and then a little on the jawline just to shape it out and I do feel like using it in that application on my skin it does work better with the pores. Now from there we do have to you know kind of address the wearing part of it which is something that um, I definitely can speak to with all of these foundations because I've worn them all a shit ton at this point and with this foundation specifically one of my issues with it from the day that I started wearing it is the fact that because it's so lightweight it has more of a satin um, satin leaning dewy kind of kind of feel to it like a finish on the skin um, because of that it doesn't really grip and like cling to my like oily t-zone or really just like my oily face in general so with this one I do like it I think it's pretty and I love love using it to film in because it looks beautiful um, but I do think if you're someone that has more normal leaning dry I think you'll prefer it but if you are like combo leaning oily especially like the more oil you have the, the less I would recommend this um, but it does have a lot of really beautiful points and I, I don't hate it I just I have to be more mindful with this one which knocked it down a couple of points like it, it's not like some of these other ones that bitch I can just like slap them all over the face and call it a day um, th this this is not that okay it definitely takes a little more work it is beautiful um, and it has its good points but just you know I, to weigh it out in this lineup it did come in later but that's not to say it's a bad foundation which th this is one of those areas for me where the ranking system wasn't quite good um, but you know I'm, I'm doing my best okay I'm doing my best <laughs> so for number six and seven we're actually gonna do these together because they share a lot of similarities um, so I'm gonna get started here for number seven we have the new Sicily one I just actually I think mentioned this one to you guys maybe a week or two ago and this is their new Fido Tint Ultra Eclat Oil Free Long Lasting Foundation again from Sicily I don't know if I said that but this foundation right here which I got on Beautylish and it is like $95 holy hell um, but I have this for number seven for number six we actually have Chanel this is the Le Berge Okay, uh, this is their Healthy Glow Foundation, Hydration, and Long Wear. And this foundation, which, by the way, if you go looking for this, everything will be linked. But this one specifically, I believe you can only get on the Chanel website. And I know I'm saying this because um, I was actually talking to Tara, which if you have never seen Tara Lynn, she has a channel here. Um, she did a full review of this. I'll link it down below. And she is absolutely amazing, by the way. If you have not seen her, if you do not know, she is my woman, okay? And you need to, that, that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds really bad. Um, but she's fantastic. I love her so much. I trust her opinion. And she freaking loves this foundation. She did a full review of it, like multiple wear tests. Um, and she just has a shit ton to say about it. So if you're curious about it and it looks appealing to you, you have dry skin, definitely go check out her video. I'll make sure it's linked down below. But where was I going? Oh yeah, but uh, anyways, I was talking to her and uh, she actually was the one that told me this is only available at Chanel. So if you are looking for you know anything to that effect, you have to go there to get it on their website. Anyways, getting into these foundations, the things about them that are very similar, the things that I noticed like right off the bat, these are both very very hydrating foundations like if you have um, drier skin if you have e even normal skin but you love it to have like that dewy luminous satin kind of feel what is this you notice my my face I just get like oh yeah like I get so into it probably because as someone with oily skin I want to live that life like that dewy hydrated look that that's the life I want to live and I'm over here living this mattified life why because I'm just an oily little person over here like just put an egg on my head it'll I'm sure it'll fry okay it'll just sit there put me out in the sun for it'll act like a frying pan because I am I'm oily and I just want to live that healthy glowy beautiful hydrated life okay but it's, it's just not for me anyways as I was saying these are both super hydrating they look beautiful on the skin and the reason that they were edged out just ever so slightly between the Sicily one and the Chanel one um, I, I do think just in terms of application the way that it looks when it's first applied the Chanel one does look better it, it builds up to a, a more beautiful slightly more robust medium coverage I would say and it just overall I noticed that it pairs better with my more satin leaning matte concealers than this one does don't get me wrong this one still works good but I feel like this one it just settles in a lot nicer and even though you know obviously I go on to set my face and I go on to you know ultimately powder everything this foundation just it edged this one out slightly in terms of application what I would say for these first of all the reason they're ranked lower for me um, or well lower to right in the middle kind of is that I love the application I appreciate the glow I appreciate the way that they look on the skin because they both look beautiful but ultimately the Chanel one has a little bit more coverage 
coverage to it. It builds a little bit faster. At the same time, I prefer the Sicily one for the glow that it gives off and the fact that it's a little bit more leaning satin versus the Chanel one, which is like hyper, hyper, very, very, very dewy. Um, so I feel like, you know, if you're looking for one that's more dewy leaning satin, definitely go towards the Sicily. Um, just because, again, I, I like the appearance of it on the skin. I think it's more of like a, a healthy glow versus the Chanel, which is just an overwhelming glow. And then also just as a side note, because you guys know, as I've said a hundred times, I set my entire face. And because of that, I think neither of these foundations wear particularly well on me because um, these are that type of foundation where if you uh, if you look at them, they look beautiful on their own. They apply great. They look so beautiful, so smooth, so healthy, da 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 da. But as soon as you put a powder to them, they for some reason just get a little thicker, a little cakier. And these just, they, they don't tend to love powder as much. Now, I will say of the two, the one that actually, shockingly enough, um, the one that I was able to work with easier was the Sicily one. Why isn't this? I feel like this should be six and the Chanel should be seven now, now that I'm saying all this out loud. Um, but I do think that this one works better with powder. I was able to work with it more in that sense. I think if you are someone that has dry skin um, or even combo leaning dry, they're beautiful. Or if you just want like a, a really nice dewy look on your skin, those, those are for you. They're super beautiful. But if you have to set your face and you're more like me, combo leaning oily, they might not be your favorite. All right. So now, now we can move on. We are halfway through and what better timing? Okay. My mom and my dad come home. They shut my door. They bring me a fresh diet Coke, which oh, thank you so much. Fresh little beverage. I love it so much. Um, and then also now with my door shut, my dog can't just keep walking in here. Click, 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 click. It drives me insane. Um, I, like I love her so much. I, I truly could not love this dog more, but like it, when they are gone, if that door is closed, she will sit on the other side of it and just cry and whine and cry and whine. And I'm just, uh, it drives me crazy. So anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad they're home because the door is shut and uh, at an appropriate time because we are now halfway through the list. And at this point, we are going to enter a foundation that if you follow me on Instagram or well, I guess <laughs> unless you follow me on Instagram, you have actually not heard me talk about. And that would be the newest addition to Cure Wise. This is their new weightless foundation. And with this foundation specifically, I'm actually going to read you this little excerpt from the uh, the Beautylish website. And obviously I'm not doing this for all of them because this, this video would be really long. But with this one, I just want to read. It says that this um, is an invisible touch liquid foundation. It is a serum like formula that builds from light to medium coverage. I don't think it builds to a full medium. I would say light medium. Um, and it says use a little for a fresh face, luminous glow, add more for a natural looking medium coverage that smooths, evens, and perfects. It's super gentle on the skin has, and has a long lasting, hydrating, comfortable wear. Thanks to the addition of ingredients like certified organic chamomile water, hyaluronic acid, so on and so forth. Um, and just, you know, it, then it goes on obviously to talk about everything else. I wanted to read you guys that description of this one specifically because I personally, as somebody who has worn it over and over again, I have mixed it with different concealers and powders and different, even different foundations, like just to mess around with the coverage. And I could not have said it better myself in terms of um, this product, how it sits, how it wears. Um, it, it's very hydrating. It's natural. It is lightly buildable. Which, by the way, with this foundation, I know I touched on the coverage briefly, but um, if, if you do need, like for me, I had a bunch of breakouts like down here in the, in the last couple of weeks. And I find with this foundation, rather than build the foundation itself up, it actually looks really beautiful if you go in with like a touch-up concealer. Like um, for me, I used my YSL All Hours or my, my, my Benefit Boy & Cakeless Concealer. I've been using that a lot. Um, if you go in with that first, lightly touch up those areas, just give them that little bit of coverage and then go over with this. Um, so, so you're building up that product as opposed to this. I feel like you're still able to get that beautiful, light, more natural looking skin, but still also achieve like a, like a covered kind of effortless look on your acne um, or, you know, scarring, whatever you have redness. But uh, this foundation for me, it's at the middle of the pack because I feel like not only is it so true to what it said, but it does wear so beautifully. And, you know, as somebody that, like I've said, I've got, you know, that oily situation right down the center of my face. Pink, it's like, it's like a landing strip of oil. Okay. But you're just like sliding through it all day. Um, and, and as somebody that kind of, kind of struggles with that, this one doesn't really make, make that any easier. You know, I have found that using this foundation by itself all over, definitely I do get, you know, more oily right through here. But the good part about that, because this is lighter coverage and it does sit so light on the skin, um, even though I do get more oily, it's very easy to touch up. Just as a side note with that foundation, something I 
I want to add. If you, you know, you're in a hurry, you don't want to do like a full beat, full, full situation, um, but you're still wanting a little coverage, this is actually a beautiful foundation to just take, drop a little on your hands and do, you know, one of these. And you'll still get that nice light coverage. It really does settle in more like a serum kind of foundation. And so you'll still get a light amount of coverage. It'll settle out beautifully. And, you, you know, it's just the application of this one. You don't have to be very specific because the actual consistency of it, it is very fluid. It's easy to work with. All right, now getting into number four, this one I don't have to go into a lot of detail on because it's really here as a reference for another foundation coming up. But uh, it's still one that I have tested recently and some of you guys did ask about. So this is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh uh, Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. Just to give you kind of the, the brief rundown of this, because like I said, I've talked about it before. Um, but just to give you the brief rundown, this does have a beautiful um, natural finish on the skin. I would say it's kind of a natural look, but more satin leaning. So it's not overly dewy. It's not overly, you know, like crazy hydrated on the skin when you first apply it. But it is one of the foundations that as the day goes on, because of that hyaluronic acid, it will become more hydrating. Like it'll definitely increase on the surface of the skin, especially if you're oily. So just keep that in mind. And then in terms of coverage, I would say this is a pretty straight medium. Um, it's really not super buildable, but again, it, it is a really nice one from the start. So you don't have to um, apply a bunch of it, like, you know, to add up and add up coverage, which ultimately can look cakey on the skin. This one is not like that. You get that nice medium right from the start. And so your application is never too thick. It's not too heavy. At this point, by the way, obviously we've covered a lot of positive aspects of this foundation. And you, even sitting at spot number four, I just want to say, like, I do recommend this foundation. I think it is beautiful. I love the way it lasts. I love the way it looks on the skin, all of those things. And I was actually really impressed the way that it works with powders and primers and, you know, just like the mix up there, especially for the consistency of this, which is on the thinner side. Um, just overall, I am impressed with this and I do really like this foundation. I've worn it a ton, but the only reason, and I mean the only reason, like just to get nitpicky, um, that I had to move it down a little bit is that with this foundation, I do notice as the day wears on, um, I do get a lot more like side to side kind of transfer. Like if I do any of this and that's just because, you know, it's in the nature of the beast. It's more hydrating and I'm more oily. So it starts to repel for the price. You get a beautiful foundation and it looks great. Very hydrating. It's, it's very true to the claims that it had. Um, just like with, uh, with, uh, what was the other one that cure wise one, actually very true to what they say about it, how it's going to look fresh and beautiful and, and kind of more natural on the skin, but in like a satiny hydrated kind of way. And I definitely agree with that. You know, in case it's not clear, it's in my top five. So I do recommend it. I think it's beautiful All right now hitting number three. I, ju I just want to say these are obviously my top three foundations from here on out. And I think it's so interesting because these three foundations are so different, <laughs> like one to the next to the next. They quite literally have nothing in common. And I just think, I, I mean, other than the fact that I like them, but I just think it's, it's so interesting. Just, it, it really goes to show me as somebody curating this lineup, I have such an eclectic taste in makeup and foundation. And like from one day to the next, like who's to say who I am, like what I want, what finish I want, what coverage, what anything, um, who, who's to say, because I, how, like I, I have so many things that I love and I just, I don't know, it makes me smile. So I just wanted to share. Anyways, like I said, getting into spot number three, um, this foundation I think is going to actually surprise a few of you. And that would be the Chantikai foundation, which I tested out a long time ago in testing Chantikai makeup. Of course, I'll have it linked down below, but this is their future skin oil-free gel foundation. And I freaking love this foundation, you guys. It looks so beautiful. Um, it definitely has more of what I would say is like a water gel kind of consistency to it. Like just in terms, I love that I show it to you. Like that's gonna, like that's gonna answer any question. Just to give you the Cliff Notes versions with this, um, the thing that I love about it the most is the fact that I get, when I apply it, I get like that light, light medium coverage. It looks beautiful and it smooths out my skin in such a way that I, I, it's, it's just so flattering on like my texture, my cheeks right through here. And even as I go forward, this, this is like probably the biggest thing with this product that stands out. It works so beautifully with other makeup. Like I go in, I add this, then I add concealer on top of it, blends out, buffs in, and it just it like grabs the product, whether it's again, concealer, primer, powder, even on top of that, whatever cream products, it, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I, as I add other products, it's almost like this as a base. It just like hugs everything that I apply and it just keeps hugging and it brings it in and it never looks thick or cakey or like built up on my skin. It always just looks so, so like everything is just like pressed together. And by the way, all of that I think is made just a little more interesting with this one specifically because it does not give me like an overly high hydrated look on the skin. This, this is 
so unbelievably accurate to like when I say a skin finish it goes on it does dry down but not in like a like a drying matte kind of finish more so just like hey this is my skin overall it's just one that I've reached for a lot I've been really enjoying it ever since I filmed that video and uh, yeah I just I'm I'm like I'm just as shocked as you guys to see it on here especially for like the application I, I didn't think this would ever be the kind of foundation I would reach for but it's just it's it's beautiful I mean you, you just you, you know you just can't argue with the truth okay it's really beautiful all right now going into the final two I'm actually gonna give them both to you at the same time because obviously if you saw my favorites video you do know which one I'm more like leaned towards as of late but uh, spot number two with Miss Congeniality here we have the runner-up as the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation and Skin Care which does put number one at the Too Faced Born This Way Matte Foundation. Of course of the two I'm gonna start off with It Cosmetics and you guys this foundation it first of all if you have tried the other It Cosmetics stuff I I'm gonna tell you right now I have tried all of their CC creams everything else that they've tried in like the foundation realm and it has never worked for me like their liquid CC creams I've tried the regular the the matte one the hydrating one I've tried them all and I, oh my god they all look horrible on my skin and so when they launched this one I was super skeptical I went I went into this with more skepticism than any product in a very long time and it's just because I, I honestly thought for a long time that it cosmetics like their formulas just didn't work for me and that's okay if they don't work but like I, I just I wanted it to work so badly because I read the claims I thought it looked amazing and I was blown away like right from the jump with this foundation because it claims to be a water light medium coverage natural radiant finish and I am telling you there is nothing <laughs> on this earth that could describe this foundation more accurately than that because with this foundation you apply it, and I think that's like the most overarching beautiful thing about it is that when you apply it you get this beautiful medium coverage but it also at the same time looks like literally as, as the name would suggest it looks like your skin but better it is so beautiful so again naturally radiant it's not overly dewy whereas like you know I, I put on these other ones like the Sicily and the Chanel and you can tell that those are like very dewy very glowy very jutsy as as Kathleen would say um you know they have that look on the skin and this one is so unbelievably naturally beautiful also just as a side note I remember I, I said the ColourPop one was kind of a, a reference point um when I reviewed this at first way back when I did say that this foundation from it cosmetics reminded me a lot of the ColourPop one and now that I've went through I've used both of them a ton of times but especially this it cosmetics obviously I do like it more than this and I, I still hold true to that like there's a lot of similarities this one from ColourPop um it also has that kind of you know more natural day-to-day -day look on it which is great but of the two I do think that the one from it cosmetics it, it edges it out just that little bit because not only does it wear better on my skin like just as far as you know actual time on the day but I have noticed that it works better with more products and it works better longer than the ColourPop one so th this one just tends to be a little bit more finicky on my skin and it doesn't last as long now of course all of that does lead us to the final one which I'm not going to talk about it a ton because I did briefly touch on it in my favorites like I said but this is the Too Faced Born This Way matte 24 hour undetectable super long wear foundation and of this one I have currently used I want to say to about here because I just used it again the other day and so I have actually used um, probably not quite almost a third of this foundation and the thing about this the, the thing that really continues to shock me which if you didn't see the video of course it'll be linked but this foundation when I first applied it I went in I applied it like I normally would I added my concealer and right from the jump this was a freaking disaster okay it looked so bad it got super chunky it dried down weird and I was just like ah! I thought I was gonna hate it like a hundred percent thought I would hate it and instead <laughs> instead I wiped everything off I tried it again and oh my word I, I I remain to this moment so grateful that I did because what I learned about this foundation I think is the most important thing to know about it going forward um and, and that would be that with this the mattification part of it like that that dry down the thing that really um all of its claims kind of hinge on that matte long wearing aspect and if you pick this up if you want to test it out the one thing I would tell you is that because it is more matte and that dry down does start quicker you have to work quicker and you, you really have to adjust um, how you do your makeup now for me what that looked like and this isn't a big deal I do my makeup like this all the time but for me what I ended up doing to kind of curb that mattification situation is uh, I actually went in and I use this more so with the Scott Barnes method than any other don't get me wrong it'll work when I do it regular you know foundation concealer the works but I really really love the application of this because it's just a little more fresh 
blush when I do it Scott Barnes which for those of you that don't know Scott Barnes is like the, the triangles under the eyes a little bit through here and you, you more so sculpt out your face with some concealer and then go in with foundation just in this situation I do that because then I'm able to get the concealer blended before foundation which like I said it cuts down on the time where that that foundation is drying down on my skin and it makes it more workable for the powder and like all of the other products to come after it and so so for me that's like my biggest tip you know you, you might have to have a little bit of a, a learning moment with this but overall for me I was able to make this like obviously work beautifully because it's my number one spot um, and I've worn it time and time again because with this what I love is that even though it has beautiful coverage this is definitely more of like a high medium coverage buildable to I would say a damn near a full coverage um, even though you know it does have that more matte situation that I had to work through ultimately everything that they said about it, it is accurate it's a beautiful finish on the skin again that that beautiful like matte kind of velvety look it has a great wear it really is um, a, a degree of transfer proof that I wasn't expecting like so much so that throughout the day like when I touch my face and you know you catch yourself leaning or doing this whatever um, I find that with this foundation it does not disturb as easily as other foundations because it does just kind of like lock in and seal down on your skin but just as a side note like so something that I picked up with this that I, I noticed makes a big difference or uh, maybe, maybe if you already picked it up and you're having this situation um, something that I think this really responds to differently is various powders because obviously this one by itself is much more matte on the skin and so my, my one caution to you would be be mindful of how much powder you apply and what type of powder uh, like for example for me I would never go near this with like a, a like an air spun powder that's way too thick it's way too drying for me the one that I've noticed that actually works really well with that is the um, the, the Fenty one the, the Fenty Pro Filter it's beautiful it has a great light mill light consistency and just overall like it, it tends to lightly set everything but it doesn't do it you know overly so but alright you guys that is it that's finally the end of the video I know this was definitely a long one especially for a talk through but uh, that's the end that's the end of the foundation roundup I hope that this was helpful and that you know I was able to answer some of your questions as far as my overall thoughts my likes my dislikes and ultimately which of these foundations I like and why what I think their strong points are so on and so forth of course I want to hear from you all down below so don't, don't go anywhere yet um, I want to know your overall thoughts opinions do you like the video these foundations were you curious um, are there any of these that you want to try that you've already tried that you love that you hate so on and so forth like I said leave it all down in the comments and like I said at the start of the video if you haven't done so yet you can subscribe turn on your post notifications follow me on Instagram and that is it beautiful people thank you all so so much for watching please don't forget to have an amazing day night weekend whatever it is when you're watching this and I'll see you in the next one bye all right beautiful people what is up that is so close to my face <laughs> Okay. Is it normal that my armpits eat my shirts? Like, is that something that happens just because I got big arms or just because my armpits are hungry? Like, what, what's the deal there?